Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today, an art journal tutorial where we're going to take one stencil and do at least three different techniques. Here's the inspiration for the page. The dogwoods are blooming in Victoria, BC. They are absolutely gorgeous. So here is a sneak peek of the finished page and at the end I will use my art journal prompt and process cards to go over every step. So I am going to on this gessoed 9x12 Canson Mixed Media page, I'm going to do some stamping using archival ink. And the stamps that I'm using, which I will list in the description box with links, are good basics. You will get a lot of use from them. This is a honeycomb one. The one I used, uh, I believe, is Kaiser Craft. This one is from Stamperia and is Words. I like the bolder, bigger font on this. It's one of my favorites and I'm sure you'll love it too. Many of the products, stamps, stencils can be purchased at ninnysnapkins.com. There's a coupon code and a link in the description box. This is a Harlequin stamp, another good basic. I like the solid parts of this. I just want to give my archival ink a good dry and then I'm going to come in with colors. Now I only end up using the cobalt blue and the yellow green. I don't use the turquoise and I'm using the block and blend technique of applying them wet on wet with white gesso right onto the page with a makeup sponge. I love when they blend together you get other tones and that just adds interest and movement to your background. I want some areas to be more yellow green, I want some areas to be just pretty much straight cobalt blue, but then we have all the tones in between. Now I'm going to want to make this look like the sky and the trees. Hence the color choice. I knew I was using that dogwood stencil. And the dogwood stencil is one of the newest from the Crafters Workshop. It's one of their sign stencils, but as you can see, you don't need to use it for a sign. I wanted to add a little bit more yellow green. So I'm just, once it's dry, just adding it in a few spots. Yellow green used to be a color that I absolutely never used and then now it's one of my staples. It always adds that pop of color. Now I'm taking this dogwood branch stencil and I'm stenciling with Prussian blue across the background. So here's the first technique using the stencil. I'm just putting acrylic paint through the stencil. Easy peasy. And I'm using a dark color. I want to simulate that you know, there's lots of branches there, but I don't want to do it all with the other techniques. I'm just layering this up and instead of using a different pattern. So we have the stamping and now we have some stenciling. We're adding layers. Sometimes I'm pressing darker and using more paint. Sometimes I'm, I'm not. And you're getting, again, variation. The makeup sponges I use are more dense. I get them at the Dollar Tree, but they do have some that are very, they're very porous and they don't work as well. So, but some of the um, different shape sponge ones are more that say the right consistency. So I'm love, love, loving this background. It looks, like all the dogwoods in the background, the branches. And I am flipping to the other side of my stencil to get some other variation and movement. Prussian blue is another one of those basic colors that I just always must have in my stash.
After stenciling with that, I did wash the stencil before I use it again. I don't usually worry about it, but we're going to be putting modeling paste through that stencil and I wanted it to stay white. I didn't want it to turn blue. So now I'm going to do some stamping with acrylic paint and I'm using my stamps that I have taken off. This one I took off the block and I'm using the makeup sponge to put white acrylic paint on it and then I'm stamping it. The white, adding stamping with white as one of the final layers just really lightens the page and I really like that effect. It's one of my new favorite things to do. I find I go in cycles. I find, find a technique or I refine a technique and I keep going. When you use your stamps with acrylic paint, you need to stop and spray it with your Murphy's Oil Soap and clean that acrylic paint off. Giving it a dry. Now I just decided that I wanted some bolder white on there, so I grabbed that word stamp that I used with the black archival ink and I'm using the white acrylic paint and just getting that here. Just as it's a little bigger scale and it's giving me the effect. And I like how the one, the French script stamp gave a certain effect and now we have another scale. You definitely want to get some script and text stamps in your stash. Of varying sizes. So I'm taping this dogwood branch down and we're getting ready to do the second technique. We are going to put modeling paste through the stencil and I don't want it to move. I'm using the Crafters Workshop modeling paste. It's what I have the most success with. I'm putting it on the key card with the palette knife and then I use the key card to put it through the stencil. And as you can see, I did not use the entirety of the stencil. You can use parts of it. At this point, I was thinking I was going to add another branch underneath it, but I wanted to do the next steps before I got to that. Now you really can't see that, but that's okay because now I'm going I wanted to I'm going to in a few minutes paint the dogwood blooms out using the stencil as the base for the third technique. But before I do that, and while the modeling paste is drying, and I do use the heat tool as well, I'm just edging the page with black acrylic paint. You really want to make sure that modeling paste is dry before you do the next step, because we're going to add more wet to it. So here's the third technique where we you put the modeling paste through it and now we are painting out the stenciled part. Now you could do this whether you use modeling paste or whether you just stenciled. I'm going to get the texture from the modeling paste but I'm painting it out. Now these dogwood blooms are going to be white. They also have pink dogwoods, which maybe I'll use this stencil again when they start blooming. And then I would paint gesso like I'm doing here. And then I would come in with either my ink tense blocks or acrylic paint and then add the pink and shade it to get the pink color. With this one, I put gesso, a couple layers of just white gesso, and then I do come in with the more opaque white acrylic paint. You just can't tell which is which because on camera it looks identical. So I'm just using the modeling paste outline and 
painting it out, going right on top of the modeling paste too. And you're going to want to put the gesso over the modeling paste, especially if you're going to add color afterwards, because you want the modeling paste to take the paint the same way as the other areas. So I don't keep all of the footage of me applying the gesso and painting the stenciled parts out. I just love those sign um, stencils. They're mostly focal images. And for those of us who can't draw, this is a great uh, solution. You can just see a close up of the beautiful background. And you can see all the layers. You can see the stamping, you can see the stenciling, you can see every single layer. And now that the dogwoods are white, you can see why I added the stamping with the white acrylic paint with the script stamp and the text stamp. And here you just see me going back and making it more opaque because I am painting it white. I wouldn't need it to be completely opaque if I was painting it pink or a different color. So now I'm taking gold and a makeup sponge and I want that texture from the stencil, the modeling paste through the stencil to show. So here's one way you can do this. This is kind of random. It's not as precise. And if you like this look, this is the way you can do it. I'm going to show you a second option right away too. And you'll see if you go back to the picture at the beginning of the actual dogwood, some of it turned has some brown in it. So that just kind of simulates that. It's not white, white. Here's that technique. Put the stencil back on and stencil through it. Here I'm taking the gold paint and lining it up and then stenciling. This gets it on all the high parts. So do what works best for you or the look that you like best. And you can see that gold just adds and it really brings out the texture. Now the center of the dogwoods is that yellow green. I went online and I was looking at pictures of dogwoods and, and uh, they have that yellow green, which is why I chose it for the background. You want the different components, the background to have some of that same color in it. That just makes it all work together. I'm just taking the brush and just rubbing it over the textured center part of the flower. So now I'm going to paint out the branches and the leaves. And to do that, I am going to use my ink tense blocks. I look at the swatches, I find the color. I apologize, I'm out off camera here, but there we go. And I typically use more than one color. So I'll use several shades of brown um, and several shades of green for the leaves just to, I just find it too boring if, and flat looking if you just have one color. I like my Inktense blocks. They are permanent when they've been fully activated. So if I was going on and putting varnish on this, I wouldn't have to worry, especially if it's dried overnight. Sometimes if it's not completely dried or cured, it, it may reactivate. Word of caution. So here I'm just adding a different shade of brown And just adding that little dark just made the made it work better on the page.
And here I'm going to paint the leaves and I'm struggling. I keep trying different greens and they don't quite work, but I keep going. I didn't want the leaves to be as forward as the flowers. I wanted them to fall into the background. So what I'm doing off camera, I'm rubbing, I'm getting wet water on my brush and then I'm rubbing it on my ink tense block, making a bit of a puddle on my glass surface tabletop and then just painting on top of the modeling paste. And just adding different greens to this. I come in and I take a baby wipe and I wipe back some of it. That just gives instant highlights very easy. And then I'm adding a little bit of a darker green. And again, the greens that I've used have matched the greens that are in the background or the blends that I've had. So I go to my sentiment pack and I've got some excess ones through the garden gate. This is a sentiment pack that I've put together that is available at Ninny's Napkins. It's a digital download. You can resize it and print out as many as you want. I chose the one that says the earth laughs in flowers and I played with the sizes and because I want it to stand out and I'm just bubble cutting around this script part. You could print the sentiments out on tissue paper, but what I find is if the background is dark, the tissue paper may not go, you may be able to still see it. I'm just going to glue that down with my fluid matte medium. I use the matte finish because I don't want it to shine. If this was on a canvas, I would put maybe a final layer. I like a satin finish, varnish. But I don't want just the area that I'm gluing down things right now, that to be shiny and everything else to be matte. Then I'm going to add a little bit of shading using Payne's Gray. Now Payne's Gray is a blue toned gray. So it's not as harsh as black, which is why I chose it. And you can see this is just going to make those blossoms stand out a little bit more. They're the focal point. I want to see them. So I'm just adding some shadows. on the branches and around the flowers as well. I could have, and I didn't even think of it at the time, shade the center of the flowers. Because often that would be, there would be shadows in the center. And I, until now, didn't even think of it. And I just work my way around all the flowers. And there is the finished page. I absolutely love how it turned out and I hope you did too. 
So I started off by stamping with archival ink. That's permanent ink onto the gessoed page. I use an anagalous color scheme. Those are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. The colors I used were cobalt blue and yellow green or green yellow. I applied those colors with white gesso using my block and blend technique, using a makeup sponge right on the gessoed surface. Then I came back with my stencil and I stenciled with a dark color all over to in the background. Then I came in and I stamped with acrylic paint using a script stamp and a text stamp. And I used white acrylic paint to make it bright and white. Then I'm using the stencil again and I'm putting modeling paste through that stencil. I edged the page while the modeling paste was dry, drying. And then I painted out the dogwood petals and then I applied paint to the textured area by putting the stencil back on and sten stenciling with gold. I love the texture. We've got dogwoods that are textured and some that are in the background. I added a sentiment and I shaded around the focal image. Thank you so much for joining me. Enjoy the close-ups of the finished page. Until next time, go get creative.